Do you remember the surplus energy manager project that we did a few years ago where we measured the energy going to the grid and it used automatically for free to heat the water in the storage heater or the thermal siphon? Yeah, this inverter with battery has exactly the same behavior. But now instead of just powering water heater, it can also power the whole home electricity that we are spending which is really cool and if you are watching this video on your windows 10 or 11 computer and you still haven't activated it and can't even edit your desktop icons don't forget to check out cdksales.com where we can find budget official oim keys at an affordable price and with the coupon code that you can see on screen and down below on the video description it will get even cheaper in the last few videos we talk about the battery and the inverter and today i'm going to share some of the measured methods that i use now the first system that i did install a few years ago consists of those meters in the electrical panel at the time they were great but now Nowadays, they're just mostly cosmetic. They measure well, that's out of the questions, but aren't bi-directional. So I installed them in a way that on the right one, it measures the total consumption and on the left one, it measures the total solar production. And if I had them measuring the general flow, I would never know if the value was positive or negative. With the battery in place, all generated energy is now consumed by the inverter to charge the battery. So the values will stay equal unless the battery is already at 100% capacity. And during the night, if I'm drawing power from the battery to power the house, it will show zero because there's no consumption from the grid and obviously no solar production from the solar panels. My favorite and the best price to what we get is Shelly AM. It monitors our household energy consumption and also solar production in real time. In fact, even if you don't have solar panels, in my opinion, the Shelly AM is one of the best investments that we can do to save on our electric bill at the end of the month. Because when we measure something, we tend to save. Electricity is by far one of the ones that we know notice a lot because once I do know how much my washing machine, my water heater or a simple light that I do have on the living room that most of the time I leave it on because I don't know how much it weighs, then once we start measuring we will save a lot on the end of the month and everything that we measure. Right now I've got one Shelly AM measuring production and consumption and a second one measuring what goes in and out of the battery. That's because the battery and inverter apps, although they record that uh, well, they have a significant delay. And as you guys know, I prefer to know in real time what I'm sending to the battery or consuming from it. And Shelly AM allows exactly that. Besides that, if your system has more than one inverter or microinverter like mine does, if you want to measure them one by one, then besides the Shelly AM, I also use the Shelly 1PM and Shelly 1 Pro PM, which will give me values on the energy that's being produced across the multiple sources, in this particular case, inverters and microinverters. But leave down below on a comment section if you want to dive a bit deeper on the way that I do measure the inverters and also the general power production and power consumption, or if this is enough. Now, another app that I love is Weebee. This was one of my first measurements systems. Some of them gave me completely inaccurate readings. And after spending a lot of time comparing values from my grid supplier meter and several monitors, I conclude that Weebee and Shelly AM are just top notch, not only on the software, but especially on the accuracy of the measures that they make. Just as an example, one normal month where I do consume about 600 or 700 kilowatt hour, when I do compare it with my actual reading from the bill that I paid to my provider and then Wibby and Shelly, the difference is so small. In about 700 kilowatt hour, we will get a difference of about 5 kilowatt, which is 
awesome. Now, back in the day, it was called Mirubi, but then later they rebranded to Weebi. It's been my standard for checking if other meters are reliable or not. And looking at the data, it can measure production and consumption. And with the battery, consumption always matches the production because all excess energy is being stored. During the night, though, there's a small issue. Since there's no production, but also no consumption from the grid because power comes from the battery, the readings show zero. That's why I prefer Shelly with the third clamp to measure battery usage. Now, Weeby also has a third clamp option, which I did install just a few days ago, so I'm still doing a lot of tests. The feedback that I can give you is that it doesn't count the energy going into the battery as solar used. And when the energy is drawn from the battery to power the house, it records as regular consumption. And this messes up my calculations, so I'm still figuring out the best approach. Another issue is that it doesn't accurately show the battery percentage. Actually, it shows once per day, which is 100%. It will go to the same that the battery has. But once it starts working its way down, at some point it will go on with a wrong value. And then when it comes up, the same situation. Even though I did configure the maximum capacity of the battery that I have, which is 15 kilowatt hour, but uh, so regarding Weeby with the battery, I'm still doing tests and the feedback that I have today is this, but more in a future. And for today, this is it regarding measurements. I hope that this video was helpful in some way. And if it was, don't forget the usual thumbs up right over there, which is really appreciated on this side of the screen. My name is Roberto George, and as always, I'll see you on the next one.